Hey guys, welcome back to the loading screen of Kerbal Space Program, where Bob has heard of Lenry's troubles. So he wants to lend a hand. Um, we were uh, working on a replacement for the Keythane Hunter when we noticed that we had absolutely no way of remote controlling it to send it up to Lenry. So Bob, as the downtrodden of the trio, has decided that he really wants to help out Lenry just to stick it back to Bill. Because, you know, Bill's always downtrodden, downtrodden onto Bob. Yes, that makes a perfect English sense. Ah, oh, so did that. Um, but anyway, so we, we started doing our staging and everything's going cool. But if you notice, there is uh, something on my number four staging that should currently be fired and is not. But we'll talk about that when I get to it. As I say, Bob here is earning science so we can stick a remote control unit onto uh, the Keythane Hunter Mark II, where I fixed all the problems that Lenry sent back information about. Um, so right there is the point where I noticed that my only gimballing engine, the only way I have of steering this other than straight up torque control, hasn't been firing the entire way. Which actually speaks praises as to my rocket design, because it carried on going up, not spinning out and being like totally out of control and stuff. And, but anyway, so we started our gravity turn here and trying to get the uh, meters per second up nice and high on my forward trajectory. Uh, I was having a bit of uh, trouble actually on the uh, the takeoff dur just after I uh, upgraded to 0.23. Um, and I actually thought the physics were being changed a little bit, but it turns out that my rocket design was a bit, bit rubbish and I was trying to lift an entire middle stage all on just a few number of rockets so uh, yeah sorry squad I doubted you and uh, it was all my own fault so you'll notice uh, Bob has a uh, rather strange um, vessel design there uh, I was taking my inspiration from sort of you know the the Blade Runner slash fifth element esque type flying car design um, I've got tiny little rockets on the back um, the the, the Rockamax tiny ones, not the tiny radial ones, but the tiny inline ones. And then we've got the, uh, the, the large radial engines on the side. Nice cockpit in the middle so that Bob can have a good view of what's going on. And uh, yeah, and a bit, little bit of monoprop so we can just uh, take the fine control systems when we need them. So we're about halfway up to orbital velocity now. And at this point, I'm, I'm feeling good about myself because as I said, uh, up until this point, with that middle rocket not firing, I thought that um, the entireties of the Kerbal had been messed up and changed, and I was going to have to learn all my systems all over again, and it had taken me this long just to manage to get a, uh, a decent launch stage on the go. But luckily, as I say, that, that wasn't the case, and um, Bob, through the magic of a uh, slow burn and a fast edit, I will get us up into uh, an orbital space. Uh, there will be one staging going on where I drop down to a slightly smaller rocket. And yeah, and then I'll find myself in a nice circular orbit. Kind of like what you're seeing on screen right now. And in fact, I didn't go through that, that, that staging. I managed to do this all on the, uh, the, the uh, lifter stage, which means uh, unfortunately at some point all that rocket behind me is going to get dumped in orbit. Um, so we'll probably have to send another mission up. Um, we'll, we'll probably start a, a debris clearing um, crew up and we'll start sending up crews that can come up and, and mess around in orbit and uh, deorbit all the, the random bits of junk that I managed to put up there because I always like doing that. It, it's nice to work on your um, rendezvousing technique and also learning how to push stuff that you just managed to forget to put any sort of docking port on. Uh, so here I am mucking about with the maneuver nodes and I'm a little bit annoyed because I seem to have put myself into an orbit that no matter what I do I just end up uh, intersecting with the moon which obviously when you're on your way to Mimus is not really what you want. But after a little bit of playing around, I eventually find this sweet orbit, which will put me roughly into the right place where I can take advantage of the spaceship that I have put up there. So with my trajectory secured, or my planned trajectory secured, I decide to uh, swing my nose round to point towards the maneuver node and um, get a little bit of the inertia wobbles at the end there but you know that's nothing that a bit of time acceleration can't fix and I start screaming towards the um, projected burn point and then I realize something that the engine on the back of this ship is a lot stronger than the engine that's going to be there when staging happens so I, 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 I 
try and um, compensate for this. I bur burn out a little bit here. I'm not sure why that stopped burning at that point, because looking at the video afterwards, and I thought this at the time, that I still had a little bit of fuel left in that tank, and it just for some reason turned off, even though I never at any point turned my throttle down. But that's okay, there was a little bit of fuel wastage. We're only going to Minmus after all. Um, and I find myself with an almighty large burn to perform on the dark side of the planet. Uh, now this um, leads me to an issue that I have quite a lot it seems, um, where I just forget that um, reaction control is almost, well not reaction control, torque control from the pod is almost entirely solar based. Um, so obviously where I'm doing this, where I tried my best guys, but this, this ship isn't quite as finely balanced as it could be uh it was you know a new design it's got like six engines on it um and when you fire engines badly that's what happens uh i ran out of fuel in in that small stage and now i need to do some mucking about like loving the tweakables in the new in the new version turning things on and off mucking about with their their thrust ratios um, and I turn on the, the tiny ones in the background that are really just supposed to be for manoeuvring, but because their ISP is so high, I think, hey, I can use this for my burn up to Minmus. And um, yeah, I, I begin. Unfortunately, this now means that I've got like minutes of burning down time. Uh, I think we can possibly jump to the end of this burn because I don't know about you, but I don't want to watch me just doing the same burn all over again. Uh, though I do have a small point where my... Um, reaction control fails and I might like to see that and if I can just carry on stringing out this particular sentence for long enough we may actually get to the point where we get to what witness me spin out where I run out of um, solar power though I am very quickly running out of things to say and it's quite nice watching my uh, my altitude go up in a, a quite as fast as that obviously this is double speed and there we go right so um, run out of electric charge I almost immediately clicked what had gone wrong there um, thankfully, as you can see on the bottom of my ship, I'm almost immediately back into um, sunlight so we can get that sorted. Have my torque control back online and point back towards my um, maneuver node so we can uh, take off these final meters per second delta V that I need to make and point get my orbit intersecting with Minmus. Uh, as I've done just there, and that is a beautiful one. It comes down to nearly 400 meters, uh, 400,000 meters towards the uh, surface of Minmun, where I'll be able to select a good LV, get down and do some science. I, of course, am carrying three types of scientific experiments upon this vessel. Uh, we have the um, temperature sensor, thermometer, that's the one, on the nose cone, the mobile materials bay, um, that's the big one in the middle there, and also the mysterious goo canister. Uh, you'll notice that almost straight away I have clocked Minmus in, like, traveling and glittering away it's there that I just pointed at it with my mouse which I would point out despite nearly a year maybe longer of playing Kerbal Space Program is the first time I've spotted Minmus while still in Kerbin orbit so yay achievements uh, I've come into the sphere of influence of Minmun and I'm now trying to decide what's a good point to uh, break my orbit and uh, break down to a lower orbit yeah uh, obviously the, the the best place is the periapse uh, I've run the ma uh, maneuver node back and forth along that line quite a lot and for the energy you expend you end up making your other side of orbit just as low but wherever you are on the height of orbit when you start burning is where that will stay that's really bad explained go and play with the maneuver nodes <laughs> right <coughs> so whilst I wait the, the half a day or whatever it was um, for the manoeuvre node, I, I get, a, get a look at Minmus, um, point myself around and then start thrusting. Um, and it's always nice to have the, the thing you're aiming for in view whilst performing manoeuvre. Um, for some reason this particular burn was a, a rather unstable one. I, I'm not sure if uh, any burning had happened uh, slightly off axis or something, but the, the ship had developed a bit of a roll at this point, and I could see no no reason really as to why. I, mean, I could I understand it um, not yawing, uh, roll. Yeah, no, it is yawing, yawing back and forth um, as it's two two fuel tanks burning down at possibly slightly different rates. Um, yeah, but then, anyway, I bring my uh, periaps down to something like uh, ten thousand meters. 
uh, and I start playing around with the maneuver nodes to uh, work out a landing site. Now, what I'd done wrong here is I'd started braking on the wrong side of the planet. When I'd got a circular orbit, I should have gone back round to the dark side so I could pick a landing site in the light side. Unfortunately, I was doing all my braking maneuver on the light side. Uh, and I've not realized this yet. I think I'm going the other way around my orbit. So I'm like, oh, it's all right. I can just brake and I'll, I'll, I'll drift into the sunlight. Um, but about, half, well, coming up to the next maneuver node, I'm like, something's badly wrong here. Uh, it's here when I start seeing the sun, yeah, there, that. That view there, I'm like, I'm going the wrong way. This is not how I expected to be approaching this place at all. Um, so at this point of maneuver node execution, I check my map and I'm like, no, 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 no. I'm not landing on the dark side again. Um, we're going to delete this maneuver node, go round and perform an inefficient braking maneuver at a higher orbit uh, because visuals are more important than fuel efficiency. Uh, like especially in the Kerbin system. The, well, in fact, the first thing I do is try and wait for my orbit to turn around relative to the sun. And I'm like, oh, that's cool. And then I look in the background and go, oh, well, look at that over there. Uh, I watch that a few times. And then I turn my, my attention back to what's going on here. And I realize that things just aren't, aren't progressing well on the, the shifting orbit phase. So I'm like, yeah, we'll, we'll have to come down at a steep, steep descent um, and try and burn it all out when we're when we're nearer the surface which i think is a fairly good plan when you've messed everything up up to this point <laughs> so at this point my plan is to bring my orbit down as low as possible over any sort of lit area of minmus um without just careening straight into the surface because whilst uh, that would work, and I, I could like bring myself down in a controlled manner. Um, I'm feeling at this point that it would be much better if I perform this action that I'm now making the maneuver node for, bring myself down as low as possible, and then just cancel all my um, horizontal movement. Uh, as always, this is a, a situation that seems to have been easier said than done, but I think I can put it off. But that said, uh, I've not been able to actually execute any of my maneuvers exactly as I intended. Well, th that's not true. The transfer orbit went well. Yay, interstellar space. Okay, so at this point I'm just kind of floating around in space, waiting for my maneuver node to come round and meet me, uh, meet my uh, retrograde? Yes. Of course it'll be my retrograde. That's the bit that I need to point towards when I'm braking. But yeah, so uh, now that I've finally found the body of Minmus, you know, in close proximity to me, because you may have noticed my screen flitting around all over the place there, as I was trying to look for the rock I was hurtling towards. Um, so yeah, a small orientation, try and make myself uh, actually flat to the um, ground of Minmus, because obviously as a hover vehicle, uh, as this uh, so obviously is, uh, I like to um, I like to have myself orientated in the correct direction so that when I do thrust with my main engines I don't end up careening off in funny directions um, which actually takes me a, 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 a small while to figure out that that is something that happens but you know it's a, it's a new system it's a new way of doing things of course I'm gonna have uh, minor issues with the, with the new control systems um, now already at this point I'm not overly happy with how how steep i'm coming in uh i i realize that i'm gonna have a lot of um downward velocity to to try and shed off here um but i have a lot of great big engines on me i also have a lot of uh monopropellant though i did make a bit of a mistake with the monopropellant uh, at the moment i'm currently burning forwards with the monoprop and and this is all good that that itself is not the issue the fact the, um, the fact that the fuel tank at the rear is my only fuel tank for monopropellant. So as I am burning my monopropellant, I am changing my center of mass, which uh, ends up turning everything a bit weird. Uh, so at this point, I'm like, hmm, I know these big side engines are, are, are quite strong. Maybe I could turn them down a little bit. And then I realize immediately the, the futility of that as I'm hurtling towards ground at a hard, fast rate and I'd have to try and get them all exactly the same level of tweak. All right, so six kilometers up, I'm like, maybe I should start thrusting now as I've got less than a minute before I smash into the floor. Um, and I'll pitch my nose down and try and use my, well, use my main thrusters to uh, to slow myself down. Uh, obviously, I want to um, change my surface velocity down to pretty much zero and then um, just 
knock off the the the, the final bits of of upwards velocity to, to to bring down for a nice nice steady landing uh again at, at, at this point i'm figuring out how my orientation to the land um, affects how badly i thrust myself back and forth across the surface and as we all know thrusting across the surface is only useful in certain situations not in this particular one and now we are forced to sit back and witness the reason of why I like to get my orbit scraping down across the surface as close as possible before I start braking. Because, oh wow, this just takes so long. Uh, even at double speed, I, I, I just, just watch me drift. Oh, so slowly down towards the surface. Uh, this does uh, imply to me that I had made my braking orbit, uh, braking burn just a little bit too early. Uh, if I left it off a little bit, I would have careened into a mountain because you know that's the way it works for me. I can't seem to uh, to get my my braking maneuvers exactly right. I've uh, spent forever drifting down to the surface or s slam into a mountain. Yeah. But thankfully, at these sort of velocities, Bob actually seems to be enjoying himself. He does normally look quite scared at these situations, but he's got that little smile on his face, a little chattery lip. Um, I still haven't quite got um, myself orientated exactly flat to the surface, so I'm imparting myself with some uh, quite strange lateral motion. But there we go. It's a nice, safe touchdown. Go, Bob! Woo! Obviously now at this point we have to uh, gather our wits and start thinking about some science. It is our primary mission here. First off with the materials bay. Uh, that was a good 225 science. Materials uh, canister, that was at least 10. I didn't quite catch it. And 25 for the um, crew report. Uh, Bob's now going to get out, do a little hop, muck about on the... Uh, on the jetpack for a bit and we're after an EVA report and a crew report and of course what is the most important thing the mission flag we call this one for Lenry the description of course being down with Jeb because Jeb Shh. such an arsehole all right so we take the surface a surface report no surface sample an EVA report Let's not mix those two up, that could be awkward. And go and store them in my uh, my capsule there. Um, and at this point, uh, a rather brilliant idea occurs. Um, I'm on one biome here on the salt flats, but just over there on that mountain, that'll be another biome, surely, surely. And it looks so close, right? I mean, you could just reach out and touch it. Well, that's what I thought at the time. Anyway, um, I made a small hop. Um, I didn't want to didn't want to go too fast in the uh, on the jetpack because um, I have killed many a Kerbal going too fast on my jetpack in a low gravity environment and uh, hitting the ground just a little bit too quick. It's glorious to watch, but generally means that you haven't quick saved for a very long time, and that that makes Steve a very sad man. Uh, unlike this, which makes Steve quite a humorous man. Oh, look at him dragging his face across the floor like that. Hopefully I'll zoom in. Yeah, go Bob, eat your fist. <laughs> so uh, eventually um, the friction brings me under control. I get to stand up and have another go at it. Still that mountain is looking incredibly far away. Um, and if there wasn't something interesting to punctuate about halfway through here, I'd be like, no, I'm not going to talk all over this. I'm just going to skip to the end of it. Um, as I probably will do on the return journey, because this is already painfully long for me. Um, but, but, oh! <laughs> I'm, I'm not a sadist at all when it comes to my Kerbals. <laughs> right, so shall we take a small little cut here and get to the uh, serious sciencing? So we're coming in for a leisurely landing on the slope of one of Mimus Mountains, and... Boom! Best crash of the uh, of the episode, I've got to say. Look at that spinning part in there. That was amazing. Um, right, so, surface sample on the Minman slopes. Awesome. I don't think I'm ever going to be able to land a ship here, so um, it's kind of a good, good thing that we got here. Uh, and then I start flying away, and I'm like, wait, we've just had one crash. Let's save it on the side here. So I put my feet down. Ugh put my jetpack away and make a quick save bam up in the corner there and because I'm a pro I decided I'm gonna fly this one backwards 
And I'm like, hmm, hang about, this might not be the best idea. Um, I can't quite see what the floor's doing, and I have no idea how fast I'm travelling. So we spin around, and we've got something like two kilometres to, to cover here. And suddenly we're at less than 100 metres. Because, oh, that, that was... It was a nice, graceful, smooth arc. Um, but it was literally just a nice, graceful, smooth arc. And you don't need to see that. I don't need to see that. Um, though we do need to watch this, where my jetpack just fails on me. Uh, for some reason, if you touch your feet down and start falling, your jetpack jet pack stops working, uh, as demonstrated again by Bob there. Um, which is, I can see leading to some very fatal situations where you're expecting your jetpack to save you um, and then it really doesn't. So at this point I'm like hey look at that all I have to do is boost straight up and then immediately forget and start maneuvering myself around for orbit. Uh, I didn't want to do that I just wanted to go straight up so I could leave Minman's sphere of influence and go straight back to Kerbin. So um, in about three seconds I'll realize what I'm doing, uh, put the gear away, look at the map, go oh my god what am I doing? Straighten back up and off we go again. Yay! We, we, we can do this. We are good mission planners. Um, almost immediately I'm down to quite an awesome um, trajectory to get me uh, back into Kerbin orbit. Well, back into Kerbin's atmosphere, hopefully. Um, and with a small switch of engines, I uh, sort myself out a maneuver node and I'm like, well, I could wait until I get all the way back round to the most efficient point to do this. Or... I could use what fuel I've got left to get myself close to where the maneuver node is telling me to go, and then I should at least be like grazing Kerbin's atmosphere. Uh, as it happened, I did the most expedient method of um, pointing myself straight at the rock of Kerbin and making sure that I can definitely get back home without all this fancy sort of aero braking business. Because let's be honest, in this ship, I'm just going to like hit the top of the atmosphere, flip over six times, and then go skidding off into outer space. Uh, I'm not sure if that would actually happen, but knowing my luck, that's probably what's going to happen. <laughs> uh, and then we wave goodbye to Minmus. We're like, bye-bye, Minmus. Um, have good times. You weren't very tasty. And, um, yeah. Retracting planets. Back off into the atmosphere, uh, into the void of space. Watching my altimeter grow. I'm watching my time acceleration go past. So, so far we've been out for three days. Three days in this can. Well done, Bob. Uh, it's amazing how he doesn't go nuts, especially when he has no idea which direction he's going. When he's looking around, going, "Where's the planet? I can't find the planet." Wait, let's use the nav pool. It should be below me. There we go. <laughs> uh, it, it is the the biggest problem that I have in space is not knowing which direction I'm going. Um, the moon, of course, reminding us why we're doing this. Lenry is indeed in orbit in his spacesuit around the moon. We, we need to get home, but get this science back to uh, back to the science center and do our best to add some sort of um, remote control mechanism to Lenry's ship so that we can send it out to him unmanned so that he can then get inside it. Um, it's either that or we're gonna have to add some sort of like second pod so we can have a second crew member. The, I don't really like that idea as a, as a plan. Um, I mean, I'd have to take interviews for new space astronauts and, and try and find out who, who would be the best fit with Lenry. Um, I don't think there's a Lenrina. Uh, I, I, I've had a look. If I can find Lenry a wife, that, that would be good. I, I would do this. Oh, and at this point, uh, as well as a, a really weird face, uh, <laughs> I noticed that my um, parachutes had actually deployed at the same time as uh, firing my, my engines, which was actually in Kerbin orbit not that long ago. So yeah, there we go. That 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 was a, a fun little thing. I'd done that entire mission with my parachutes de deployed, and it was a good thing that I hadn't encountered any atmosphere, else they would have popped out and been absolutely useless at this point. And I would just smash into the uh, into the ground, and I would be going like, "Oh no, oh no!" But yeah, we can all, we can all just picture that. Yeah, I'm sure I'll do it at some point. It seems to be a situation that happens quite often. Um, also, I'd like to point out two two parachutes pretty stable ship uh, it's not flipping around it's not it's not going nuts I did break the back landing gear there but I think that's all right that's good right the front landing gear has gone and stuck into the ground nicely and after the long ass weight of the loading screen we see all the science that gives us 644 science to play with that's 561 from that mission alone 
Good going, Bob. Good going. Uh, and a quick look at the um, tech tree, just so I can see sort of what 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 probes are available to me because uh, th that's obviously the best way of putting remote control onto a ship is to have some sort of probe body just kind of in line with it uh unfortunately everything's just a bit bulky at this this point of the tech tree so i don't know i'm gonna have to decide what i'm gonna do with that and i'll probably talk you through it at the beginning of next episode but until then thank you very much for joining me for this adventure it's been an amazing one and i hope you join me next time bye